southern forests, uh, like 13 states in the southern region, Caribbean, Virgin Islands, but basically it's a large productive forest land. Uh, 208 million acres of forest land containing very uh, diverse and productive ecosystems, some of the most productive in the, the world. And they provide for clean air, water, wildlife habitat, uh, clean energy, uh, recreation, and a stronger economy. So the basics, uh, wood products, the standards are for building, furniture and paper in general, and then those other non-timber products uh, such as medicines, food, especially product pine straw. So all those others that you don't typically think about as forest products. So 89%, 88% forest land in the South is privately owned, which is kind of unique for the remainder of the country. And bottom line, to sustain healthy forests and maintain economic viability of forest land, forest management is vital. That's, that's the tool that uh, makes the engine run in a, in a productive and desirable way. Uh, southern forests, uh, this is just uh, an image. Uh, the green is the, that's the management type. Okay, but first off, the forest types uh, historically were the longleaf slash pine lower near the coast, uh, loblaw shortleaf, a little more inland and then into the mixed hardwoods as you start gaining elevation. Uh, management type uh, was the pine uh, mixed is in red. You can hardly see that. And then the upland hardwood. So uh, you can see the pine components very large, uh, but really in reality, we have more hardwood in the south than we do uh, softwood. Not by a great deal, but we do. Okay, and just a point to make that was already mentioned today is growth to removal. Uh, we grow more wood than we harvest and we remove. And uh, the one is the dash line. That's when it's equal. And you can see that the hardwood, uh, softwood are above that line. So the point is we're growing a lot of wood. Uh, working forests. Uh, working forests are a critical part of our natural resource infrastructure. <coughs> And because they are fundamental to a strong economy and a clean and healthy environment. They uh, provide continuous environmental and social benefits to the nation while maintaining their value to the forest owner. So it, that forest owner is a, a key component in the South. You know, it, it's like I say, it's primarily private forest land. Working forests responsibly managed for long term to provide continuous economic value that's essential goods and services, jobs, economic support to communities in the nation, and revenue to those forest owners again. And it's essential to achieving our national objectives in addressing climate change and developing new domestic sources of low carbon renewable energy. Just carbon in general revolves around our forests. It's such a huge uh, component in that system. Forest management and quality of forest. Uh, management helps keep your trees and forest land healthy, productive today and tomorrow, and increases uh, economic, environmental, and social benefits. If your goal is maintaining uh, your forest land, good management means wise stewardship. Whatever your objectives, profit, sport, recreation, scenery, wildlife, conservation, uh, good management can help get you there. I keep driving this home, but that's really what, what makes, uh, like I say, the engine of the South uh, economy in a big way in most of the states. So good management guides you toward maintaining a healthy forest, demonstrating that social, environmental, and ecological responsibility. Uh, this is just uh, an illustration of forest management, reforestation, uh, around for a 50-year period to the final removal. You'll see the first thinning in the lower right. That's more than likely that's pre-commercial thinning, but you can guide your, uh, your stand by the various types of uh, civil cultural practices and what your, your long-term goal is to meet that goal. So you have a second, third, and fourth thinnings also. So these are productive sites and uh, in a in a serious uh, 
forest management scenario, you're removing volume every 10, 15 years on these productive sites. Uh, just some, if you're not familiar with some of the forest operations side of the equation, a couple of images, feller buncher, rubber tire skidder, you can see these are large expensive pieces of equipment and uh, it's a big investment. Uh, you need to operate with capacity in mind. You, you know, you've got to do volume or else uh, it's not going to work for you economically. So, and then uh, a couple other images, loading, hauling. But, uh, you know, for a, a, an operator, uh, a logger to function, he's going to need a handful of these types of pieces of equipment. And they're, like I say, they're expensive. So he could be, uh, have to invest one and a half million dollars easily to have just one side operating on a logging job. And that's not involving the trucks and transportation. So, like I say, he's gotta be efficient. He's gotta move wood. Uh, this is just an example of a pine plantation down on the Georgia coast. I was guessing it was 25 years old. Uh, it's, you know, it's ready to thin. So these are, uh, these are well-managed stands. This is actually on a Plum Creek ownership, I believe. So uh, just another image of uh, stand management. Uh, these are seed trees, more than likely, and I, uh, prior at final removal, they'll leave some, uh, some trees on the site for seed source. So this is an example of hardwood forest. Uh, you get more diversity in species, types of hardwoods, and uh, sizes in the, some of the more closed canopy type hardwoods scenarios. And you can see the hardwood logs. They're not as easy to process. They're, it's a little more complex. Uh, they're not as straight as softwoods typically. But uh, they have their place in the market, that's for sure. This is at the landing. Uh, this is from uh, those pine stands, Plum Creek or IP or Weyerhaeuser, whoever they were. Uh, anyway, saw log on the left, uh, small saw in the center, and pulp wood on the right. The, your larger material is a higher value product, and, you're, and it goes down as you move into the smaller saw and pulp wood. So that could be anywhere from 40 to 50 dollars a ton on the left over to like 15 dollars a ton in pulp wood. So uh, value drives uh, that forest management component. It's how your market is and, and what have you got on the land and what are you trying to put into the marketplace. So that influences how management occurs. And another thing is these are the types of uh, logs that come out of a stand. And there may be diversity in the sizes. Uh, they'll be all one species, but there'll be diversity in those sizes, and that influences that mix. That's why you manage forests is to get either a larger diameter or a more consistent diameter or whatever through your thinning. So uh, it matters, and value drives uh, how uh, this management takes place and when it takes place. So why manage forests? What do you see when you look at your trees? Do you see 10 trees per acre or do you see 10 acres of trees? Are you looking for uh, the view? Are you looking at a home site, recreation, wildlife, legacy for the family? Uh, is, or is it a cash crop or an investment? So point is a lot of diversity in what landowners want on their ownership. Um, and it's regardless of what you see or what you own, uh, management is key. Forest management, quality of life, healthier forests, forest management practices such as thinning prescribed burning create healthier and more productive forests. Uh, economic gain, South is the primary producer of timber products in the U.S. and the world. Uh, in real general terms, uh, it's like 40% of the area produces 60% of the the wood or the value of the wood in the U.S. alone. So we're the, we're the major producer. Uh, and then there's the improved wildlife habitat, southern forests are productive, dynamic, diverse, and support a vast array of wildlife communities. Elevation from the coast into the mountains. Water quality protection, forests are very critical 
They produce clean water by absorbing rainfall, refilling aquifers, and slowing stormwater runoff and reducing floods. You want to avoid situations where you have a disturbance that's out of our control, like fire or insect and disease uh, that can really alter that water uh, quality protection. And then there's recreation. Forest management creates open areas, trails, roads. Uh, they provide access onto the forest land and they provide those recreation and enhanced visuals. Renewable and energy efficiency building uh, products is kind of why we're here today. Uh, wood is recyclable and can be produced anew for generations to come on sustainably managed forest land. Market factors, just real quick. Everyone kind of knows that our world has changed in the forest products industry. So sawmill ownership has changed. They've focused more on their production and they've gotten out of the business of either owning land or, or having chip mills to supply them like in a pulp mill uh, scenario. So they've kept it simple. And land ownership changed. It's gone from industry lands to the more corporate owners, the Timo and the Ritz, that they run it more like a business for sure and not a long-term type of, of management scenario. So there's been the shift in the paper the, with a decline in newsprint and print paper with an increase in container board and fluff pulp and so on. Uh, housing market crash, everybody knows about that. Uh, and the Great Recession, the, actually the, you know, there, like Al mentioned, there is a recovery in taking place, but it's rather gradual and uh, the gross domestic product actually increased uh, pretty quickly after that decline, but yet uh, our forest sector and housing is slow in recovering. Just to mention some, how do you assure accountability or like that quality of management on the landscape? It's by use of best management practices, uh, the state and federal provincial monitoring forest inventory programs, like Tim mentioned, FIA, and that's how we know what's on the landscape. And that's a national program. And it's a continuous type inventory program. Lots of data on their website if you're ever interested. And there's some tools in there too where you can run your own, crank your own Im information tables. Uh, professional logger training and certification. That's another piece of the puzzle that we need to maintain. Uh, forest management and chain of custody certification. That's like the FSC and the SFI and the tree farm systems. Uh, yeah, it's not real prevalent in the South so much, not FSC. SFI is a little more on industrial lands. And then tree farm uh, program is a lot on the smaller landowners kind of in general. But uh, like I say, it's not a driver, but it could influence your market conceivably. Uh, Someone could be willing to pay a little more for that type of wood, but keep in mind that it'll cost you to belong to those uh, certification systems and get them implemented. And then there's the Forest Practices and, and Laws, uh, Endangered Species Act, Clean Water Act, Clean Air, and so on. Just best management practices, they protecting uh, other resources while conducting forest management activities is what good stewardship is. Uh, federal and state laws require uh, that water quality and endangered species be protected, mentioned that. BMPs are designed to minimize the impact of forestry practices and related activities on like road building and stream crossings and that sort of thing. And, uh, on water quality and other functions and values. Uh, this is where the recommendation from the State Forestry uh, Commission, foresters assist and encourage landowners to comply, to comply with these voluntary and non-voluntary regulations so that resources are protected. That's a, that's a, a great uh, program and that's what we use when explaining our how the world works here in the South when we talk to the Europeans about a sustainability. Best management practices and the FIA data is really some of our, uh, the basics that we uh, stand on. Sustainability, this little forward 
leaning kind of statement. Uh, sustainability drives confidence while uh, protecting and enhancing the environment. The South leads the U.S. in forest land size, net growth, and the protection of that valuable resource. And sustainable resources are easily accessed through the South's world-class supply chain. And that's a, that's a serious <laughs> statement. That, that's very true. The South is very productive, and they, they have an industry and the capacity, to, and they can, they can increase it uh, if the right markets are there for the wood. So, but we're still growing more than we cut. So forests and climate change, you could just uh, you could use carbon if you so desire about the climate word there. But uh, forests help maintain the carbon balance in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, healthy growing trees remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and release uh, oxygen and store carbon in their wood. Uh, this can offset those effects from the greenhouse gas emissions from burning fossil fuels. And forest landowners can enhance the positive role of forests in climate change and profit from the carbon stored in their forest land too. So carbon, there is a carbon market. We don't hear a lot about it and it's not real a, a big factor in the South, but uh, there is such a thing and who knows whether we'll see any uh, increase in that as the carbon policies evolve. So just in closing, by building with wood, you know, we generate markets for that wood. And forests can thereby, you know, stay as working forests. So just we've got to remember that, you know, that connection. That's just so critical. And we're trying to do our best to manage those forests.